Welcome to my company. I'm Scotty, the owner. Now that we've grown to a company of over 800 employees, and I'm not able to meet everyone in person, I felt it important to at least virtually meet you through a video. I also wanted to show appreciation and thanks for you joining my company. A lot of people, I'd say even 98% of the people in this company, didn't know me at my humble beginnings back in 1996 when I first opened this restaurant. Come with me, I'm gonna show you what I used to look like. Sexy, huh? That hair wasn't even popular back in 1996. I don't know what I was doing. See, in 1996, when I first opened this restaurant, I was the bartender and the waiter and the cook and the host. And I would go home at night and I would do the accounting and then I'd have to cook more food to be ready for the next day. Slowly, I had to hire my sister to help start waiting tables. Our COO, Eric Champ, who's been with me from day one, was one of my first people that I hired. Our VP of operations, Tyler Thompson, came on next. And I grew this company to the point that I needed that extra help. I needed someone to balance out. I couldn't do it all myself. Help. I, need somebody. Help. I used to bartend every week at all the restaurants. And slowly, I'm not able to do that anymore. Now I sit behind a desk and I type all day. I even get my name on my door now. My role has changed, but my dedication and devotion to all of you has not. Now at a company of over 800 employees, and continuing to grow, I need all of you to make this a successful operation. I'm very proud of our humble beginnings. Not so proud of my haircut that I used to have. But things are great, and I'm very excited for you to join our team. You should be receiving an email from me, either this week or next, welcoming you to our company. And it comes directly from me. And if you ever have a question about anything within this company, I want you to feel comfortable emailing me back and asking me those questions. I like to use this introduction to tell a story that we call the milkshake story. And the story goes like this. A man walked into a restaurant and he had a great dinner and at the end of the meal he wanted a milkshake for his son. And the server said, well, we don't have milkshakes, sir. And he said, well, that's odd because you have pie a la mode, right? And the server said, well, yeah. And he said, well, a la mode means with ice cream, right? And the server said, well, yes. And he said, well, I'll tell you what. I'll take the pie a la mode hold the pie, and take the other three things and mix them together. Milk, ice cream, and a blender, and there's my milkshake. And the server said, well, I'm gonna have to go check with my manager to make sure that's, that's okay. Of course, the manager came over and gave him some grief, and finally he got it done. But, see, that's not how we do things in this operation. The answer is always yes. What is the question? I like to use that same story in a situation that happened within our restaurant with a menu item that's no longer on the menu called the loaded waffle fry burger. See, the waffle burger was a burger with waffle, loaded waffle fries on top. We still have the burger and we still have the loaded fries, but we don't have the menu item anymore. And, so, and a guest walked in and said, I want the loaded waffle fry burger. You used to have that, right? And the server said, yeah, we used to have that, but we don't do that anymore. Again, that's not the right answer. The answer is always yes. Now ask me the question. Same story would apply with a turkey club. I've been to a restaurant before and I wanted a grilled cheese for my son. And the server said, we don't have grilled cheese on the menu. And I said, well, you have a turkey club. So I'll tell you what, I'll take the turkey club, hold the ham, hold the turkey, hold the lettuce, hold the tomato, hold the mayo, give me the cheese and the bread, and there's a grilled cheese. One of my favorite stories within our restaurant, a guest emailed me and said, I wanted to let you know, as I told 20 and 30 of my good close friends. Our server, without even asking, went out to my car, put 50 cents in the meter, and gave me more time to eat lunch. And only because he heard me talking to my guests saying, I need to hurry and eat this quicker because my time's expiring on my meter. To me, that is creating a raving fan. This is a dog! It's a saver, baby! That is the type of service that I'm looking for. It's something that I don't teach in a manual. See, in today's society, I feel like customer service is a dying medium, in my opinion. Yeah, well, hey, I'm really sorry. Yeah, well, hey, I'm really sorry, too. Get a gun! I think that makes it easier for us to go above and beyond and create these exceptional raving fan instances. How many times have you called an 800 number only to be put on hold and you press one and then you press three and then you press seven? Your call will be answered in approximately 37 minutes. 
For us, we have customers walking into our door looking to be entertained and looking for a, a positive experience. We've created the atmosphere that's already here. The doors and the walls and the TVs, everything is in place. From that point forward, it takes you to make it all come together. It takes you to make that, that experience one that the guests will remember and leave and want to rave about with friends and come back again and again and again. So how do you do that? In my opinion, we do it a, a very simple way. You smile, you use eye contact, and you use those elements of politeness. Pull out a chair for somebody, open a door for somebody, say please and say thank you. Little things that make us different than all the others that have, have lost the art of customer service. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Please hold. Our culture is important to me. In my opinion, what we've created here is an atmosphere of team and family. It might sound cliche, I think a lot of restaurants use that term. We're a team, we all work together. Cliche, Melody. Oh, I don't care. If the shoe fits, wear it, and that's another one. But I think common sense tells you that we do have to work together. I rely on you as much as you rely on the kitchen to cook the food, the servers to take the food to the table, the bartenders to make the drinks, the hosts to seat the tables, it takes everyone to make this company a success. And our culture is defined by really you enjoying where you work, understanding that your fellow coworkers become your family. And it's my job, I feel, to groom that culture with things like trips to the Indianapolis Indians games in the summertime. It's our holiday party in the wintertime in Indianapolis where we combine all of our restaurants together. We give away iPads and Cubs tickets. I think these kind of things, I hope, show you how much I care about all of our fellow employees. I go against the grain in a lot of people saying that the customer is number one. Oh, that's a cliche. Ah, good Melody, you caught it. In my opinion, that's not true. And we won't tell our customers that. I think that the employee, you, you are number one. Because I know that if you enjoy what you are doing in my restaurant, if you enjoy coming to work and enjoy your fellow coworkers and your management, enjoy the job that you're working at, you in turn will then treat our customers with that same respect. And they'll notice it on your face. They'll notice if you like coming to work, if you enjoy the people that you're working around. I'm a big believer in first impressions. I think everybody is. Right now what I'm doing with you, I'm creating a first impression. I believe your experience from the moment you walk out of your car or you walk up to the restaurant front door is shaped by a first impression. If the doors are spotted, if there's trash on the ground, if the host is missing or not smiling, all of these things create first impressions within our guest minds. First impressions are everything and I need all of us to operate with that kind of an attitude. I believe in a little phrase called the devil is in the details. See I'm a very obsessive compulsive person and I and a bad in a good way. You know the little straw wrappers that come on the end of a straw? It drives me insane when I see those all over our floors. I like things in a certain order. I like chairs pushed in. I like the, t the fresh flowers on the table to be that, fresh flowers. I like silverware to be rolled tightly. I like silverware without spots on them. I like plates without spots on them. And I'm going to ask you to help me carry on that theory of keeping a very clean, obsessive compulsive restaurant in an orderly fashion. And I believe this is one of the key areas that makes us more successful than the others. We care about the little details, the things that a lot of restaurants aren't gonna put into their concepts, we do. So a lot of things within this restaurant came to be from my early upbringing. The brick walls and the gas lanterns are creating a comfort feel, the food that we serve. I always joke that the reasons you don't see baked beans on our menu is for one good selfish reason. I don't like baked beans. The black and white posters that you see on a lot of walls in our restaurants come from my grandfather saying, Scotty, come over here and listen to me play the trumpet. So a lot of the things that you'll see in our concept are things that I truly believe in, that I love. I love beer wings, sports, hamburgers, and I want you to be behind all of that within your service in this restaurant.
I want you to take ownership within your own position. Whether you're in the bar or the kitchen, serving or host, take ownership of your area of the restaurant. To me it means taking pride in where you work, taking pride in your section, taking pride in your area of the kitchen. Understanding that if that area is clean and you run that area like you own it, like it's your own home, you understand that your guests will continue to be back to see you more and more. You'll make more money, you'll be happier, you'll enjoy where you work. I'll be back. There are hundreds of restaurants doing what we do now. American comfort food, many beers on tap, lots of TVs to see and sporting events to watch. So what makes us different than anybody else? And that's you. Your smile, your personality. The differentiation between our burgers and fries and their burgers and fries all comes down to you. One of the things that I would ask out of you as you come to work is never lie to our guests and never guess with our guests. If you don't know the answer, all you have to do is ask. Our managers play a terrific role in this restaurant and I want you to utilize those assets within our company. Management is here to help you. It's not to be a burden and get in your way. I think a lot of times at least when I was serving and, gr and growing up in the restaurant industry, I was afraid to tell my managers when I made a mistake. I would try to cover that mistake myself. Or if I didn't know the answer, I would guess and try to just tell the guests what I thought was the right answer. And I don't believe that within our own company. I don't mind mistakes. I don't like the same mistake being made twice, but I don't mind mistakes. I'd rather you find out the right answer than not give the correct answer to our guest. Good luck throughout the rest of your training. Continue to give 110% Learn as much as you can, and I hope to see you climb the ranks throughout our company. If you have future aspirations of being a trainer or a manager on an executive team or even a general manager of one of our restaurants, work hard, learn a lot, let someone know. Feel free to email me and let me know. Welcome to my team and my family. Remember, the answer is yes. Now what's the question? <laughs>